Hey guys, it's Sarah for Chroma Yachty Fine Art, and today I'm going to be making for you a split Dutch pour with gold embellishments. This painting idea came to me based off of a, a painting I did a few weeks ago where I used gold embellishment, and I wanted to take it up a notch and see if I could push the gold embellishments even a little further. As you can see here, the consistency is pretty thin. The colors I used were white, gray, gold, Venetian rose, and Payne's gray. I first laid down the gray paint and then blew it out with my blow dryer. This is a good test for the consistency of your paint because if it blows easily across your canvas with nothing else on it, then you know that it's thin enough to react and move around for the rest of a Dutch pour. I then laid down my white paint and spread that around. I later realized I should have split this painting slightly differently in the middle, but you know, with art, you don't always have all the right answers when you create, and it's more about adjusting things as you go and being creative in the moment. I then laid down a pretty thick curved line of each of my paint colors. As you can see, there's a slight consistency issue with my pink paint because it's getting eaten up a little bit and sinking down compared to some of the other paint. So I just added a little bit more. I then add a little bit more of my base paint and use the blow dryer to cover up each of the lines. Doing this will give your blowouts a little bit more of a softer look. As you can see here, I use a lot of tools to add detail and alter a piece after it's blown out. Sometimes I use a straw and sometimes I use a palette knife, either dragging it through the paint or I will add a little bit of paint to it in the color that I want to add to the painting. Sometimes I'll continue to blow out an area with the blow dryer to extend out the design a little further. As you can see here, this is the middle area I was talking about in the beginning. I really wanted the gray paint to go right up against the edge of the color, so I should have just drawn that line a little bit more irregular than a, than a straight split down the middle. After seeing how the composition blew out as a whole, I decided this area really didn't have enough blue or as much contrast as the blowout near the top, and I wanted them to be a little bit symmetrical. So I decided to wipe it off, drop down some more color, and blow it out. Same thing with the bottom here. I felt like there wasn't quite enough contrast going on around the edges, especially to its counterpart on the other side. So I tried dropping some more paint and blowing and moving it around with my palette knife to give it a little bit more detail. So the painting is completely dried for several days and I'm going to add a coat of resin to it. I like to use the brand Extreme Resin for my resin work. It's the most affordable brand that I've found and that tends to give me the least amount of bubbles. And then I mix my resin at a medium speed for about four minutes. I then pour it all over the painting. I like to go from the outside in, and I like to just use a gloved hand to spread it around. That way I can feel how much resin is really all over the entire canvas and get a nice, quick, even coat. Then you spend a few minutes going over it with a blowtorch or a heat gun, and then I cover it with a large Amazon box. For the line work, I first started by using some ribbon that was the exact width I wanted to use for my lines, and I measured a whole lot. I was working from a design I made on my computer as a reference, so then I just took the ribbon and measured out the exact dimensions that I wanted it to be on the painting and gently taped it there with some scotch tape. I did this for the entire design and then measured again and again and again to make sure I got it right because changing these lines after the fact is a very tedious process. I then went line by line and used painter's tape and pulled up the ribbon where I was going to use my gilding paint. This is the gilding paint that I use that I get from Michaels. What I love about it is that it gives you a completely smooth metallic finish. 
and then you just paint it on. It does dry very fast, so I like to put some mineral spirits in a cup and put my paintbrush in that. And then just repeat the process for every line. I recommend alternating it on different parts of the canvas so there's no way that you have overlap or your arm touches anything that's wet. As you can see here, by the time I painted the second line, I was able to go back for the first one and remove the tape. And the reason why I put the layer of resin down first instead of painting this line work directly onto the canvas was because of this exact reason that I'm about to show you. See right there on the edge, I got a little bit of the paint a little further into the design than I wanted. Because I had a layer of resin down, I was able to put some alcohol ink on a Q-tip or a paper towel and just wipe it off. If this was directly on the canvas on the paint, I would not be able to do that. And I would have to cover it up with more paint. And especially if you got any of the line work going through the intricate designs of your blowout, it's extremely difficult to try to cover that up and make it look like it's blended in. And this is the finished piece. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment below if you like me walking through my artwork process versus just watching me create. And as always, happy painting.